Welcome to the School of Motion Graphics. My name is CM De La Vega, and we have a very exciting tutorial. This is all about green screen and tracking, tracking on green screen, and we'll be using one of my favorite bobbleheads for this example. Now, if you like this video, please give us a like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, and let's get started right away. Now, this is one of my favorite bobbleheads, and we just had an amazing last of games, back-to-back multi-home run games and we're gonna celebrate that with this tutorial. We'll be doing back-to-back -back tutorials, but in one. This is the first example, and we'll be tracking this green screen background, and it's pretty easy, we'll be doing that in Mocha. And for example, number two is this one, where it's on a green psych wall, and we need to track not only the background, but also the floor. Now this is a little bit harder, so let's start out with this one. Grab your footage, let's click and drag to the comp icon, hit Control K to open up the settings, Let's rename it to VFX Full Body Shot. And let's reset the time code to 000. Now select your layer, right click, go to Track and Stabilize, and choose Track Camera. Now After Effects is going to do its best job to analyze and do the tracking automatically for you. Now if you're zooming in or zooming out, Go to the shot type and change it to variable zoom. If not, then leave it at fixed angle. When it's done, it's going to be either successful or it's going to give you an error message saying that it wasn't able to solve the camera. It failed. And if that happens, go to advanced, go to the solve method and try it out with typical. If that doesn't work, try it out with mostly flat scene. Now, in my experience, this 3D camera tracker that comes in After Effects, it's a little hit or miss. Sometimes it doesn't work well for me. Sometimes it works amazing. What I learned is that you need to give it good markers, these little markers on your green screen. You have to have an abundance of them in key strategic places, and that will set up yourself for a successful track. Once it's done, it's going to give you a stat. It's very important. In advance, it says your average error, 0.95 pixels. Anything generally under one pixel is a pretty good track. Anything over one, and you might have some problems. For example, your background or your floor may not stick. Now, let's go to the effect, click on it, and if we zoom in, you can see that it created a whole bunch of these X's. And if you hover around three of these X's, it generates a target. And the cool thing is that we can hold on to shift and click on more of these X's and it changes the perspective. Now the goal is to create the same perspective as the floor. So this is pretty close. So let's right click, go to create null on camera. Now go to the null and let's rename it to floor. Let's go to the camera and let's hit U to reveal all the keyframes. And you see that it generated and created keyframes for the position and the orientation. Now we go to custom view one, you can see that this is a path of the camera and it replicated the exact same path that we have in our footage. It's pretty cool. Now let's go back and let's rename this to footage. Let's go back to the effect and let's do one more time. Let's create a null for the background. Remember, you need at least three of these little X's. Right click, create null, and we can call this BG one more time. And let's do one for Puig. Okay, once you have your camera and once you have your null, one for the floor, one for the background, you don't need the background, but it's good to have it, and one for your talent, go to your footage, and we need to create a garbage mat to remove any part of the scene, any part of the footage that we don't need. So to create the garbage mat, we're going to use a pen tool and loosely draw a shape around your talent. And this one for now, go hit M for mask. For now, I'm going to change the color of the mask to blue and I'm going to change it to none so you can see it, see it a little bit better. We need to animate this mask. Your talent may be moving left or right, maybe moving their arms. In this case, the camera is pulling in, it's moving forward, so we definitely need to animate it. And go to the mask path and put a keyframe. So click on the stopwatch. And what I like to do is I like to go every second. So every second, I'll go and I'll check it out. It looks pretty good. Add a keyframe. Let's go to second number two. We can move this a little bit. Go to three. 
you can move it and you can also you can also move the individual points so you can move these points as well now take your time because you want to make sure that you have a pretty decent garbage mat and go all the way through to the very end now once i go every second what i like to do is i like to go halfway between each second so we're working at 23.976 which is tw almost 24 halfway is 12. so every 12 frames i'll go and i'll check it out this looks pretty good don't need to add a keyframe if i need to add a keyframe i'll add it now like i like i mentioned this is a little time consuming it'll take a little bit of time a couple minutes five minutes what i'm going to do for now i'm going to delete this this mask and i'm going to use a mask that i made for the example and you can see that the first four seconds i was going every second and after that I had to go every 12 frames. Okay, so let's copy this mask. Control C and let's go back to the beginning. Control V and here we have it. Let me do a RAM preview so you can see. Okay, the next step is we need to key him out. Now, I have an amazing tutorial on how to key him out using key light, so check it out. Uh, I want to spend more time on tracking, on compositing for this tutorial. So if you need to know how to key it out, check out this tutorial that I created way back. It's one of my first tutorials, actually. So what I'm going to do for this example, I'm going to copy all these effects, go back, and we can disable this one and paste it in. And here, here we have it. Okay. Now let's add the floor. What I'm going to do is I have this texture of sand and I'm going to click on the JPEG and I'm going to go to the comp icon to create a composition and hit control K to open up the settings. Let's make this comp really big. So for the width, let's multiply it by eight times eight and the height, let's multiply it by five. So if I zoom out, you can see it's a big composition. So let's let's tile this image. Select it, go to effect, stylize, motion tile. Now for the output width, let's multiply by eight, and that's 800. And for the output height, let's multiply by five. That would be 500. And let's go back to our composition. Let's bring in this, this floor, and let's rename it to floor. Let's make it a 3D layer. Hit R for rotation. And for the orientation, for the X, let's change it to 270. Now we need to place this floor in the right spot. And that's why we created this floor null object. So go to the null object of the floor, hit P for position. Let's copy it, Control C. Let's go to the position of our floor and hit Control V to paste. And here it is. So let me do a little RAM preview. Okay, it's looking pretty good. Now what we can do is let's go to the top view and using the camera tools, let's zoom out. Let's go to our null object and I'm gonna scale it up pretty big so you can see it. Okay, so this is Puig right here. This is our floor and this is our background and we won't be using this background so we can delete it. And what we're going to do is let's move the floor. I highly recommend to use a top view, especially when you're doing this, use your different views. It really helps out a lot. So grab this layer and let's move it forward. Let's move it back, actually, not forward, but back. Puig is right here. So let's move this floor, yes, around here. Go back to your active camera and we can scale it up a little bit. Let's scale it about 120. Let's scale it up a little bit more, perfect. We can stretch it out. Okay, so you can see that it looks pretty good. And it stops here, let's move it forward, perfect. Now let's bring in our background. We'll be using this image of the horse on the beach for our background, so let's bring it in. Let's rename it to BG. Let's make it a 3D layer. And once again, let's go to the top view. And what I'm going to do is move it all the way, move this background and push it all the way back. 
So it's right here. And let's scale it up. Hit S for scale. And let's scale it up about 200. We may need to scale it up higher. So let's go to 230. Let's move it here. Maybe a little bit more. Let's make it 250. Okay. And let's do the same thing. Let's tile it. Go to effect, motion tile, output width. Let's make it 200 and let's mirror the edges. Actually, this one might have to scale it up even more. It's a little bit too much. 275 and let's move it over. Maybe 300. Okay. So it looks pretty good. The only thing is we need, there's a couple things we need to fix. So for the floor, obviously we need to do a little bit of color correction. So go to levels and just using, just by eye, let's just bring it in and let's go and let's adjust and see if we can bring in the same luminance as, as the background. That looks pretty good. We can tweak it a little bit more, but for now it looks pretty good. And you notice that there was a, there's a hard edge between the background and the foreground. So let's fix that. So what I'm going to do is let's hide the background for now. Go to the floor, go to effect, transition, linear wipe, and change the angle to 180. And the completion, bring it down. And you can see that we're cropping it. But go to the feather and give it a high value for the feather, about 1,000 pixels. And it'll feather the back edge of the floor. So let's bring back the background. And you can see that it's blending in more with the background. It's looking pretty good. And these are the steps that I use to create, to track and composite, especially when you're doing a full body shot and you're using the 3D camera tracker in After Effects. Now, let me go over the example that I created to, to show you what else you can do. I added optical flares. And actually, let's go to custom view one so you can see. Let me rotate. And you can see the environment. So you can see I have optical flares up here. Here's the background. Here's the texture of the sand that I that we tiled. Here's this text, the wild horse. And if we go at the beginning, you can see that the text that I created in 3D, that's element 3D, it's right here. So you can add more stuff to it. You can make it exciting. I also added a shadow to, to the bottom of the little bobblehead. So let's go with example number one. And a little advice that I want to give you is when you're shooting on green screen, try to shoot at a higher f-stop. The higher the f-stop, the more in focus these little markers will be. The only disadvantage is that you, it requires more light. But the higher the f-stop, the more in focus these markers and the better your results of your tracker. Okay, so let's go and grab this layer, this footage, and click and drag to the composition icon and select your layer, go to animation, track in Mocha AE. And let's rename this to VFX, Puig, BG. Let's hit OK. And let me zoom in for you. Now to track it, we're going to go to the X-Spline tool and just draw a shape. You can draw like a square around it. And to close it, let's right click and you can move the points. Now here in motion, we're only interested in translation, scale, and rotation. Let's deselect shear. Now you can see that it created a layer for us. If we go back to the X-Spline tool and we want to track this one as well, it's going to create another layer for us. And we don't really want that. We want to include everything in layer one. So let me delete this layer. And the way to do it is, let's go back to layer one. The way to do it is go to the X-Spline Plus, this one. So click on that little tool and let's draw another, another shape, another square. And you see that it's now included in layer one. We can do that for the rest. Perfect. And let's do one more. Okay. Once we're done, let's go to this button and it's the track analyze forward and let's click on it. And Mocha is going to track this footage for us. Now you might ask, hey CM, what happened if my talent moves in front of the markers? What can I do? Now that would be a different scenario. You would have to create like a garbage mat to exclude your talent going in front of the markers. 
So hopefully I can do that scenario, that tutorial for you later in the month, in the next couple of months. So what you can do in the meantime is use markers and track those markers that are not being obstructed by the talent. I'm going to speed this up because it's going to take a while. Okay, once it's done, go to export tracking data and let's choose the last option, After Effects transform data and copy to clipboard. Let's go back to After Effects. Let's create a new null object and let's call it tracker. Now, this is very important. Make sure that your time indicator is set to the very beginning because if it's set here and you hit control V to paste, and if we hit U to reveal the keyframes, you're starting out right here. This is where it pasted the data, but we need it all the way back here at the very beginning. So always make sure when you're pasting the data back from Mocha that you're setting this time indicator at 000, hit control V to paste, and there it is, it's perfect. Now, once again, for the green screen, check out the tutorial that I have on green screen. What I'm going to do in the meantime is just copy all these effects, and I'm gonna paste it in. And also as well, I'm not going to do the garbage mat. I showed you how to do it in the previous example. So let's go and add our background. Let's add this image of the horse. I'm gonna scale it down. And let me move it over. Actually, this is it's pretty good. And let's rename it to BG. And all you need to do is very simple, using the pick whip, let's parent it to the tracker and let's play it back. And there you go. You can see that we need definitely need the garbage mat. You can see some of the background of our footage, but that's a technique, my friends. Hopefully you learned something new from this. It inspires you to go out, do a little bit more of green screen using trackers. Amigos, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and you learned something new. Now, if you wanna get started in the field of motion graphics, make some money, definitely check out the book that I wrote. It's available on Amazon. I put a link to the book in the description below. And always remember that life is truly a gift, so make it count.